Welcome to our next video on understanding large language models or LLM. Whether you're a beginner or just curious about AI, in this session, we will break down everything you need to know about LLM step by step. Ask artificial intelligence like ChatGPT a question. What is the best way to slice bread? It provides an answer that seems like a human expert. The AI appears to know about types of knives and that bread is heated when cooked. Does AI really know these things? How can it know about so many topics? Can we trust the answers? To answer those questions, let's look at the source of the information used by tools like ChatGPT, large language models. Imagine the task of scanning every word on the internet. That's every blog, website, research paper, book, newspaper, computer program, and more. That's the goal of massive computers that power tools like ChatGPT to capture everything it can on the web. This snapshot of over a trillion words creates the foundation for large language models. By analyzing the words in the model, ChatGPT can answer our questions and requests with human-like quality. What sounds like expertise is really a math problem for artificial intelligence. It works because powerful computers are trained to look for common patterns between words and phrases like tomorrow morning cup of coffee. And suppose that you Large language models can also detect context. It can tell based on words that appear together if you mean bat or bat. Every word becomes a math problem that uses artificial intelligence to find what word should come next in a sentence. So when we ask AI how to slice bread, it doesn't know about bread or knives like you and me. It only knows the words in the large language model. Because it was trained on a trillion words and their context, it can assemble the words that most often answer that question. Keep in mind that AI responses are based on what's published on the internet. And like the internet, they can be biased, misleading, and inaccurate. Evaluate and use them with skepticism and care. With experimentation and practice, you can use these tools to easily access the world's knowledge and find the answers you need quickly. Before we do further deep diving, please like and subscribe to my channel and keep supporting this channel with your love and comments. You can scan the QR code and make your support count and that support this channel to do more of these educational videos. Let's go back to our topic now on understanding large language models or LLM. Whether you're a beginner or just curious about AI, this video will break down everything you need to know about LLMs step by step. You might know there are many well-known LLMs such as OpenAI, ChatGPT, Google Gemini, Claude, DeepSeek AI, and many more. First, let us understand the definition of LLM. According to Wikipedia, a large language model, LLM, is a type of machine learning model designed for natural language processing tasks such as language generation. At its core, an LLM is a form of artificial intelligence designed to understand and generate human-like text. Think of it as a super smart computer program that can read, write, and even chat with you. If you ask some question, it can answer it. If you even ask to write some code, it can write code too. And it can do many more things. But remember, AI is not just about LLMs. There are many other branches. AI is a broad umbrella term. And an LLM like GPT lies at the very deep. AI includes many fields, including machine learning, robotics and automation, expert systems, game playing agents, and more. We are particularly interested in machine learning. In machine learning, we have three major categories, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. There are many algorithms in these categories. Among these, neural networks are what power large language models. Deep learning is a specialized field in ML that uses deep neural networks. This includes artificial neural networks, convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks, transformer architecture, generative adversarial network. For LLMs, the transformer architecture is the key component. The transformer architecture has been used in various forms. Vision transformer for image-based task, T5 for sequence-to-sequence -sequence task, BERT for NLP task, and GPT-like architecture for text generation task. The transformer architecture was first introduced in the groundbreaking research paper. Attention is all you need. It consists of two main components, the encoder, as highlighted, and the decoder, which together form the transformer architecture. Initially, the encoder and decoder of transformers were designed for neural machine translation tasks, 
like translating from English to French language. The encoder takes input text in English, processes them and generates the context vector. Then the decoder takes the context vector and generates the translated text in French. However, in modern large language models like GPT, as introduced in this paper by OpenAI on generative pre-training the language model, the encoder part is omitted and only the decoder part is used in the architecture. This decoder only model takes input text and predicts the next word, allowing it to generate coherent and contextually relevant text. But have you ever wondered how LLMs can write code, generate poems, tell jokes, summarize text, and perform so many language-based tasks? It all comes down to one simple yet powerful idea, the power of next word prediction. At its core, an LLM is designed to do one thing, predict the next word in a sequence. For example, if you start with word the, let's say the model predicts cat, and we append it to the context, then with the cat, the model predicts sat. The cat sat, the model predicts on. By repeating this process, the model generates entire sentences, paragraphs, or even documents. This ability to understand context makes next word prediction so powerful. It's not just randomly guessing words. It's about predicting the most likely word based on the context of the sentence. This predictive nature of LLMs is called an autoregressive model. Mathematically, as shown in the screen, the next word is predicted based on all previous words using conditional probability. Where WT is the next word to be predicted, WW1, W2, WT-1 are the previous words in the sequence. And the equation represents the conditional probability of the next word occurring given the prior context. As in this example, the text the cat sat on is a context word. And then the model generates the probability for the next word, which then the token is sampled using the probability. But how does the model calculate this probability? To understand that, we need to explore the decoder architecture. The decoder is the engine behind text generation in large language models, LLMS. Before an LLM can generate text, it must be trained on a massive data set. After the model is trained, we can use it to generate text by providing some context words. For example, when we give the text, the capital of France is, to the model it is first tokenized into individual tokens, which are then sent to the decoder block of the LLM. The model then outputs a probability distribution of the most likely next words. Next, we sample from that distribution and obtain the next word. In our case, the model generates Paris. So in order for the model to correctly predict the most likely next word, it must be trained on a massive amount of data. This includes all kinds of books, documents, articles, newspapers, journals, the entire internet, all coding text, and much more. This data set is terabits in size and contains trillions of words. Now let's test our trained LLM. If we ask the question, what is the capital of France? Swing, what do you think it predicts? A question mark? Yes, a question mark is the most likely next token because after asking a question, we usually write a question mark. Let's continue and see what the model generates next. As we discussed earlier, a large language model only predicts the next most likely word based on the given context, so this response is actually correct. Now let's try another prompt. The capital of France is. What might be the next word? Most likely Paris. But wait, after training on terabits of data, is this just a simple auto-completion? Yes, because the model you use in apps like ChatGPT has undergone further training. The first stage of training is called the pre-training phase. The model trained on raw data sets containing trillions of words is called the foundational model or base model. This model is excellent at understanding language and generating coherent text, but is not yet ready to function as a chatbot. So the next stage after pre-training is supervised fine-tuning, which helps the model follow instructions and behave like a chatbot. During supervised fine-tuning, the model is trained with carefully prepared data sets labeled by human annotators. On the screen, you can see an example of a data set used to fine-tune the base model. Take a look at these special tokens, system, user, assistant, and EOAs, or end-of-sentence token. These data sets are formatted using a prompt template, which varies depending on the LLM provider. For example, OpenAI, Metlma, and other providers might use different prompt formats, 
but the idea remains the same, creating data sets that mimic real human assistant conversations. The training process remains similar, but the data set quality is significantly improved with well-structured, human-like conversations. Now, after fine-tuning on such data sets, let's test our fine-tuned LLM. On the user interface, a person types a message to the LLM. For example, suppose the user asks, write a Python program to add to numbers. Before reaching the LLM, the question goes through several processing steps. Depending on the LLM provider, these steps may include correcting spelling errors, identifying the language, checking whether the question is appropriate or not. However, in our case, we use a simple prompt template that we define during the fine-tuning phase. Now a question is wrapped in a prompt template with some system instructions and an empty field for the assistant's response. Since the model predicts the next most likely word, what do you think the first generated token might be? Let's see. The model generates sure as the first token. Once generated, it is sent to the user. Because LLMs work in an autoregressive manner, they generate only one token at a time. So this streaming response isn't just a fancy animation. It reflects how the model truly functions, generating one token at a time. Each newly generated token is appended to the context, helping the model generate the next token. This process continues to generate the next token and stream the response until the model produces a complete answer or encounters the EOAS token. By default, an LLM doesn't know when to stop. It continues to generate new tokens given the prior context. So we add a special end of sentence token after each example in the training data set. Thus, when using an LLM by giving the prior tokens or context to generate new tokens in a loop, the model stops either when it encounters the end of sentence token or when a predefined maximum token limit is reached. Finally, responses like code snippets are passed and formatted for better readability. Fine-tuning can be tailored to specific purposes depending on the desired application of the LLM, so we can prepare the data set accordingly. For example, if we want our LLM to have capability to respond in Jack Sparrow style when the user wants, then we can prepare such type of fine-tuning examples. Or if we want our LM to have reasoning ability before answering like, for solving some math problems, then we then prepare such type of fine-tuning data set. These specialized data sets are prepared by human annotators and often contain millions of examples, helping the model learn various instruction following techniques. This concludes the second phase of training in LLM, known as fine-tuning, which can be done multiple times depending on the use case. Some models undergo an additional step of training called preference alignment. The key idea is aligning the model's responses with human preferences. In this phase, a reward model is introduced. The LLM receives a higher reward for generating useful, aligned responses and a lower reward for poor responses. Over time, the model learns what kind of responses humans prefer and adjusts accordingly. This completes the common training phases of an LLM before it is deployed for production. Now you understand why the decoder in a transformer architecture is so powerful for next word prediction and how it enables us to generate stories, poems, code, and more. But if you're curious how the model gets so good at predicting the probability of the next words, we need to explore the decoder architecture. Before diving into LLM architectures like GPT, Mistral, or Gemini, we need to understand how a data set preparation and proper tokenization is done as the first step. And then word embeddings, which involve converting tokens into numerical representations that capture meaning and context. Then comes the most important part of LLM attention mechanism, which helps the model focus on relevant words and helps to understand the context. Then we have other components like feed-forward neural network and residual connections. Then finally, the output layer where we get the prediction probabilities for the next token. Understanding these components is crucial before diving into full LLM architectures like GPT. This covers our LLM model of AI. So stay tuned for more exciting insights into Gen AI models. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you found this video helpful. See you in the next one.